Hello friends, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Reagan and we are finally going to be doing our January wrap up today. So excuse this delayed wrap up, but I am so excited nonetheless. January was one of the best reading months I have had in a very long time. And I am so, so happy about it because it's starting to feel like I love my reading life again. Without further ado, let's get on into the wrap up. So I read 11 books in total this month, which is a really, really good reading month for me. We will start with the first book on my pile here, which is a romance and that is Heartless by Elsie Silver. It's the second book in the Chestnut Springs series and this follows Cade and Willa. Cade is a super grumpy single dad and Willa is his nanny. So when he finds Willa to be nanny to his kids, she comes in, she's like full of life. Cade is not happy about it. He's so grumpy and she just brings so much fun and excitement into the kids' lives, but also Cade's life. It is so, so good. I ended up giving this book four stars. I I am not typically a single parent trope kind of gal, but this one was actually very good. And I have said this in previous videos, but Elsie Silver does a fantastic job at making her characters feel very mature and real and vulnerable. And I think that that's why this worked so well for me is because it felt believable. And the relationship between Kate and Willa, I feel like developed very organically. And because of that, I think that that's why this single dad trope worked for me in this book specifically. Four stars. Really, really enjoyed this one. Next up, I read an arc and that is Only If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham. I have read all of Stacey Willingham's new releases every single time that she has released them. I have really, really loved them. I definitely do not read as many thrillers as I used to, but I do still really enjoy Stacey Willingham's thrillers. This thriller, however, follows our main characters who are off at college and there is the death of a fraternity boy that kind of flips the town upside down. The girls are suspects. Like no one knows what happened. It was very odd that this happened and we just see it unfold from there. But our main character also has a lot of secrets of her own. It was really good. It was definitely my least favorite out of Stacey Willingham's books. I gave this one a three star, 3.5 maybe, but it just definitely was not my favorite whatsoever. I think that the college fraternity sorority setting was really fun and I think that was something different in a thriller. So I will I'll give her credits to that because I felt like that was a fun new twist on a thriller. Next up is an arc that I so graciously received. I still to this day don't know how I was so lucky to receive this arc, but nonetheless, I grasped onto it with everything that I had because if you guys know me and if you've been on this channel for a while, you'll know that this is my top release probably ever. That is Magnolia Parks Into the Dark. <laughs> I cannot believe that I'm holding this book right now and you literally might see a tear because I just cannot believe that Dutton was so, so gracious enough to not only let me read this book early, but also to send me the physical copy of it. I am just so blown away. This is the final Magnolia Parks book. So this is our final conclusion to Magnolia and BJ. There are still two more Daisy Hates books, but this is our final Magnolia and BJ POV book. And I will not say anything because I do not Want to be the person to spoil this for literally anyone but this was such a fantastic conclusion to the magnolia park story i thought it was absolutely fantastic you still get jess's amazing amazing writing i laughed i cried i felt every emotion under the sun and this was just so healing for me i think it will be so healing for everyone and it really tore me apart and then put me back together piece by piece it was truly an experience and i cannot wait for everyone to read this. I obviously gave it five stars. I will continue talking about it and I just cannot wait for the release day of this. I think I'm actually going to do a reread as well just so that I can read the physical copy and then I can do all of my annotations in my tabs. This book was just perfect to me. I don't want to accept any criticism on it. This was perfect to me. Ugh. I just like, can't, I can't think about it too long. I can't think about it too long because oh my gosh, I cried 
multiple times in this book and I am not a crier like when I read and I cried so many times in this book literally all for different reasons so I will just forever be thankful to have this in my possession so thank you again so much to Denton for the arc thank you to Jessa for all the pain and healing that she has caused us and I just I love it so much alrighty up next is a book that I actually checked out from the library so I do not have it in my possession anymore but that is the door-to-door -door bookstore by Carson Hine I want to say this is a translation piece of work. I think it was translated from German. It's a super short book, but it is so fantastic. It really blew me out of the water. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did. Definitely like a literary fiction type of story. We see our main character. I think that her name is Sasha. I could be pronouncing that wrong, but anyways, she is a little girl and she sees Carl, who is an elderly man who delivers books to people. She sees him out walking and she wants to join him on his book route. And we just see their sweet little friendship develop. It was so fantastic. Carl is working for a local bookstore and he wants to hand deliver books to people. Carl basically says that he knows what these people need and he knows like what they're going through. He knows exactly the story that they need to hear. And he basically delivers that story to them and they trust him with all of their recommendations. I just really recommend it. It was definitely not something that was on my radar before. I just randomly found it at the library, but I am so glad that I did because it's definitely like it definitely go pick this book up if you have not read it before because I think if you're a book lover you should definitely read this because it just reminds you how impactful books can be and also like how books can bring so many different people together I actually gave it five stars I think if you're a book lover you need to read this book okay next up I kind of want to talk about these three books together because it is the conclusion of a series can we guess the conclusion yes throne of glass I finally finished it I wanted to finish it before house of flame and shadow release and I was able to. So let's talk about it. I have the last three in the series and we're going to kind of go quick on this because obviously I don't want to spoil anything and these are the last books to a long series. So anything that I would say would be a spoiler. So I'm just not really going to tell you much about these except for my ratings and just some quick thoughts. So first up I did finish the tandem read. I did read it as a tandem and I actually really enjoyed my experience. I will say it was a little bit harder for me to get into at first just because this is not an experience that I have had before with tandem reading books. Empire of Storms technically comes first, then Tower of Dawn. I definitely preferred Empire of Storms over Tower of Dawn. I am just not a Kale fan. I'm not a Kale girly. No hate to all of my Kale stands out there. He's just not one of my favorite characters, so this one was definitely harder for me to get into. Like, I didn't care as much. Um, I cared about Kale's journey at the beginning, so I did give this book a four stars. That's all I'm really gonna say about it. It's definitely my least favorite in the series. This wasn't my favorite, and I didn't love the POVs in this one. So four stars for me on Tower of Dawn. However, this baby got five stars, okay? The ending of this book, truly terrifying, ripped my heart out, and I was unwell for many days until I picked up Kingdom of Ash. I loved it, gave it five stars. I love Aelin, I love Rowan. They're my two favorite characters. Well, Rowan is my favorite male character. He is my man. I love Rowan so much and this book just really solidified my love for him. So five stars for me on this one. Absolutely loved it. And then at the end of January, I did finish Kingdom of Ash and oh my gosh, genuinely one of the worst, best, angriest, most peaceful times of my life were in this book. Every single emotion. She has 980 pages and I read it in like three days. So that should tell you something. This book made me so emo. It made me cry so hard in the last like 150 pages. I love this series so much. I love Aelin so much. I am so proud of her. Five stars. Don't have enough good things to say about this book. All right, next up is a little something different and that is a graphic novel. This is V.E. Schwab's Extraordinary. It is also signed to be V.E. Schwab, which if you guys know me, E. Schwab is my favorite fantasy author ever. I love all of her books. So this is a full color graphic novel set in between the books Vicious and Vengeful. And it was so much fun to be back with these characters. So I am very, very glad that I picked this up. I didn't give it a rating because I don't know how to rate a graphic novel, nor do I feel like I should. But I loved all the bonus content and I loved that it was full color. If you like the Schwab, you should definitely pick this up. Next up, I read another arc and that is On the Edge by Kay Bromberg. This is the second book in the Full Throttle series, I believe. They are interconnected standalones, so you don't have to read them in order. I didn't. I didn't read the first one, which maybe I should have, but loved it. 
Oh my gosh, gave it four stars. Absolutely loved it. It's a Formula One racing romance, which all know and love in this house. I am a Formula One girly, love it so much. And this book was really, really fun. It follows Cruz and Maddox. Maddox ends up having to fake date Cruz so that he can get his billion dollar F1 contract. I thought that their banter and their relationship was so much fun. I loved Cruz. Oh, I just love this book so much. And this is also the first book that I've ever read from Kay Bromberg. Gave four stars like I said I think that if you love F1 you should definitely check this series out it was fantastic the writing was really good the romance was really good also you can tell that this author is a true F1 fan because it was written so well just in the sports part of the romance we love a Formula One romance all right two more books and I promise that we're done I feel like I've been talking forever a curse for true love by Stephanie Garber I finally finished the once upon a broken heart trilogy this month I love Jackson Evangeline this is definitely Evangeline story like she shines in this book this is her moment and we love that for her I thought it was a good ending to the trilogy there were a few plot points that I didn't love or that I didn't really feel wrapped up so I ended up giving this book a four star only things that I feel like just didn't really work for me were the fact that there were a lot of questions that I just feel like were not answered by the end of this book that we were kind of waiting on especially in the second book there was a lot of like new plot points that were introduced and then I just feel like there was no resolution for them in this book and so I didn't love that I didn't feel very complete by the end. I loved like Jackson Evangeline's story, but then everybody else, I'm kind of like, what happened? Where did they go? Where did they end up? Like how were some of their plot points resolved? Like I just don't really feel like they were super answered by the end of this book. So that's the only flaw that I had. And I also wish there was more angst in this book. That is just a personal thing, but I wish there was like more angst from Jax. Other than that, I absolutely loved it. This is one of my favorite YA series and Stephanie Garber is just so fantastic. Four stars for me on this one. I'm glad that I have finished the trilogy now. Alrighty, and our final book for January is an arc of Ashes of You by Catherine Cowles. This was another arc where I was completely not expecting this. I was so unbelievably grateful because I don't know if you guys know this, but I have absolutely fallen in love with Catherine Cowles writing and her series, the Lost and Found series specifically. The first one is Whispers of You and then the newest one and the last one is is Ashes of You, which comes out February 8th. I was genuinely so upset that we were going to be leaving all these characters and Cedar Ridge. That I just was like distraught by the end of it, but I just felt like it was such a perfect last book. It was so amazing. This is Lawson and Hallie's story. It is another single dad story, which I actually very, very much enjoyed. I loved Lawson. I loved Hallie. I loved their relationship. I loved how they got together. I loved Hallie's relationship with Lawson's kids. Like it was a fantastic fantastic book. I ended up giving this book 4.5 stars. This is definitely one of my favorites in the series. Definitely, definitely go read this series if you have not already. They're all on Kindle Unlimited. It's a romantic suspense, so if you like the Debney Perry Indigo Ridge type of vibe, definitely pick this book up. I love her so much and I cannot wait to start reading her backlist this year, but I am just so, so grateful that I was able to read Ashes of You early because oh my gosh, no notes. Loved it so much. I think it was my favorite suspense storyline thus far in the series. It was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Also, Hallie is hired on as the nanny. So if you like single dad nanny trope, there's a little bit of an age gap. It's a small town. It's romantic suspense. It's spicy. It's fun. So 4.5 stars for Ashes of You. And that's the last book that I read in the month of January. So those are the 11 books that I read in the month of January. I had the best month of my life. Oh my gosh. I loved all these books so much. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I know that I've taken a break and that I am back now, but I am just always blown away by the amount of support that you guys give me, whether it's through the comments on my YouTube videos, whether it's through my DMs on Instagram. You guys are just so amazing and so supportive. Really hope that you enjoyed today's video. You can always follow me on my Instagram and Goodreads. Those will be linked down below. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.